I think we are live. I think we are live. Yes. So uh, Kunal, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for coming on this little podcast of mine. It's been a long time since I've been, uh, you know, waiting to have this conversation with you. Thank you for having me, dude. Uh, I'm sorry for rescheduling at the last minute. I realized that I had messed up my calendar and we had to move evening to daytime. Uh, but thank you so much. Yeah, man. It was. Uh, it's it's absolutely fine. I was uh, I was willing to do this at any point. I know that you have a busy schedule, but uh, this was a conversation I was waiting. Hold on. I think that there is something wrong with my OBS. Uh, hi, YouTube chat. Welcome uh, everyone. Can you all confirm if everything is looking okay and uh, if we are both audible? Because I don't want the conversation to be interrupted in the middle. Uh, yeah, uh, moderators on my YouTube chat, can you just confirm if everything looks okay? Mm, good morning. All right. Yeah, okay. Everything looks fine. Everything looks good. All right, perfect. Kunal, we can start. How are you, man? How have you been? What's up? Uh, good, good, man. Uh, I, I realized that uh, I, I usually become a better version of me during crisis. COVID was that period. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, uh, it's funny, but if you require crisis to become better in life, it's not a very good mechanism to have. But I, you, you probably know why certain people are like that. This is... <laughs> Do you uh, do you know this phenomenon where uh, when you are reading a new book, then everything that you hear, you sort of try and correlate with that new thing that you've just heard. Correct. So what you just said for me, it's about uh, Taleb's anti-fragile. Okay. Because that's something I picked up a week or so ago. And he talks about how there are systems that can collapse under pressure and there are systems that can grow under pressure. And you have to try to be the latter kind. Yeah, I've not read his work, but I, I can totally understand. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I have all the books of Taleb. I have not read any of them. Uh, uh, and I realized that uh, I think I've read a little bit about the anti-fragile thing on his tweets, yeah. uh, what he talks about. But it's actually quite interesting, right? That how uh, some systems can take these propulsion of energy towards this direction, actually use that to grow or to collapse and how these are structures built in a certain way. Uh, and and uh, it's quite fascinating to think about this because, uh, and it probably comes from the early exposure to crisis. Yeah. So so if you've managed to survive them, you've kind of become become the one who can take these crises even more and just kind of keep recovering and from that. And sort of thrive on it. Yeah. When but I, I can tell you like, uh, I was just telling somebody from my investor group saying that, it's unfortunate that I need crisis to do well. Uh, do I need to keep manufacturing them to do well? I don't know. So, because how, I don't know how long will this last. But I'm not a I'm not a peacetime. Uh, I'm a wartime. So this is what it is. Am I likely to just kind of create crisis in my life to do well in life? I don't know. Do you need it's chaos to grow? Planet. The unfortunate thing in this is that once you start seeing this pattern, you realize that it is replicated across all fields. Uh, the first time I read about bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the gym, the way you build your body is by literally tearing muscles apart. Correct. And that is the pain you go through. And Correct. if you don't tear your muscles, they will not reform and then they will not grow. Yeah, same is for making money in life, right? Only when you risk the capital that you have, you will be able to create wealth. Uh, if you say that, hey, my money should stay as it is, then it will not grow. Uh, like a lot of people don't realize that if you keep your money in the bank account, earning 2-3% interest rate when the inflation is 5-6%, right. you've actually depleted your wealth uh, because the world's uh, inflation is constantly growing uh, and, and, and you are just not... Uh, keeping up because you've just kept your money over there. So only when you risk your money uh, right. uh, in some different ways, uh, your wealth grows. So it's it's funny, but I, I believe that a lot of people don't understand there is health and wealth. You no, know, people have said health is equal to wealth, but actually it's a very interesting correlation, right? Mm -hmm. You can't hack either of them. If you mm -hmm. hack either of them, they don't last. They will come back to the default state. Only when you have gone through the slow process of building health or wealth, it lasts. Right. Uh, uh, it, it's also something that 
if if you are just like kind of uh, uh, like it's a it's a slow process and 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 both of them require you to somewhat challenge your current health or your current wealth which is let's say working out and pushing your muscle limits or whatever or yes. putting your money and investing or whatever it grows right so it's it's funny that how both of these have almost similar principles uh, uh and and it fascinates me uh, why is there so much fear though i mean when no when you go to the gym we are not scared of losing what we have we know that there is a system you do this kind of workout and you will get this kind of result but people are so afraid of entering the stock market or investing they want to keep what they have where is that fear coming from i think the difference between health and wealth is that you cannot expend all of your health in one click but you can expend all of your wealth in one click right so if you decide to say that hey i'm going to allow only 5% of my wealth to be assumed that it can completely get wasted mm. then it can kind of compound but a lot of times we we associate one at one block but we don't think about that with our health or or our energy or strength because we are constantly expanding this every day so wow. the question is that is it expense or is it investment right uh, for example let's say uh we anyway spend our time all day doing things but you can always do one hour of reading and expand your brain uh but a lot of people don't do that and probably spend time on instagram stories for 2 hours because it doesn't feel like an expense it just kind of goes without your brain actually growing uh, in any manner right yeah. it is almost like a calm state for your brain where the, only the like dopamine hits are just hitting escapism you just like boom 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 you are just going out but reading feels like oh shit i have to really apply this and think about this and process it and and i think just like muscle brain also we can become better at it if you just kind of every day read something that you will not feel it's a big deal to read for an hour yeah. and so on and so forth so i think my work out for that, your brain yeah i think it's a similar principle that anything that is in investing also if you just kind of say hey uh Uh, one hour of my day or 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 one hour of my week i'm going to say hey i'm going to take 10% of my income and kind of actively do that and sometimes you don't have to do crazy stuff you don't need to do this extraordinary workout to build muscles mm-hmm. you can just do basic stuff which is can can i do sip can i do something else can i just invest in i don't know uh, uh, facebook stock i'm just making these things up but if it's sometimes simple stuff just better outcome but i think people like extraordinary stuff you'll see one interesting pattern is that yaar main ye day trading karta hu ye karta hu wo karta hu wo karta hu but the thing is it doesn't last like because you do all this like cool cool stuff and then you're gone uh because it's it's for your excitement right but you cannot get wealth or health through excitement discipline it's it's only through discipline and rigor that you keep doing stuff and it will just work and the thing is that people will always spot that one story that one crazy story where somebody did something extraordinary and it just happened and everybody thinks that they can replicate it yeah i think that's the crazy part about uh, i i worry about startup world as well they are like oh this guy is funded unicorn or oh, become billionaire the thing is that very few people get to know the back story of what really went into becoming what they are and how they became that and so on and so forth yeah. and i think therefore i i worry about people obsessing about the end states right for example imagine me being envious with somebody's six pack and not envious of their insane regimen that they did for years yeah. to achieve that end state yeah right Yeah. but we are like are yaar ye six pack kya hai and the thing is that is the exact time some scamster can sell you ye pill le lo six pack abhi dekho ek mahine mein aayega right and you will see lottery and and diet pills are very similar because you are trying to achieve the end state yeah. uh, in the shortest possible time uh, and and you are not willing to go through the hard work to kind of achieve that so you always find the shortcut yeah. to achieve somehow you are trying to circumvent the pain of growing and you're trying to reach the growth state without going through the pain of growing correct and, wow. and i think uh i don't think there is 
pain i think it is a marker of growth there is no such thing as pain right <laughs> everything is a marker of growth yeah if can something continues to be painful is that you have not changed your identity right for example imagine if people treating back to me offended me every time then i have not grown yeah because i am at the same level of identity where the same things affect me yeah so i have always observed that you can easily know how person has grown by seeing what kind of things affects them what kind of things offends them what kind of topics uh, they get triggered with if they are consistently the same they have not grown i love this analogy because now if i'm going a little bit deeper what they're talking about is feedback from the system and if you continue that parallel between uh, muscle growth and mental growth or financial growth everything has a feedback and there is the reason that when we are working out we we are more comfortable is that the body has evolved over so many millions of years that there are inbuilt negative feedbacks that as soon as you exert yourself beyond what is comfortable your body will automatically slow down maybe in our financial sense that has not developed so much for everyone there will be people who have that instinctive response that this is where i can stretch and as soon as my level is crossed i should slow down but not everybody has it yeah it's very hard to sometimes receive good feedback loop in things like money but in mm. body your body will kind of set the limits in some ways yeah uh, and, and therefore it's very easy to get wiped out with money by doing something really really stupid you can't really do uh doing stupid your body will your your cells will prevent you from doing something stupid yeah but on the case of money uh, it has to your neocortex has to control where uh, uh, you, you don't go, go on your overdrive with your amygdala with your money right it, it will always result in negative outcomes uh, and therefore gambling becomes fairly addictive to people who uh, are, are able to kind of i don't know suppress their neocortex uh, yeah. uh, in, in some ways or or kind of stay in the state of getting those hits wanting that uh, kick huh? yeah I, i think if you can if you think about entertainment uh and it's funny right this applies to relationships also uh you can extend the same logic that greatest relationships are built through small deposits every day hmm. <laughs> yes and it is true for brands as well that they are built through one small things every day you can't hack to become a great brand did tata hack to become tata right uh and i think if you combine this thing of wealth health relationships brands and think of them them as one thing that it is slow growth mm. and you need to give a deposit every day for it to compound mm. right in some cases you can wipe out these things instantly for example in case of a brand you can wipe out a complete brand let's say if the leader does something really stupid right yeah. and and or the brand does something really really stupid right you can completely wipe out a brand mm. right but if you have really deposited a lot sometimes it can withstand something right for example if a uh, a brand like tata that has probably invested hundreds of years of of investing in a brand one scam will not kind of sh- shatter yeah. them and kind of bring them to ground but a startup could just get wiped out because they have not con- given their deposits yeah they don't have that reserve correct but uh uh you you're also thinking about uh, relationships in the same way that you could take a lot to build it but sometimes one stupid action of yours can just wipe out a relationship overnight but if you have done deposits right. in a disproportionate manner then you can probably withstand that one stupid thing also yeah and continue but if you have not made the deposits then a stupid thing just say boss i don't want to be with this person because anyways they had no deposits with me right so it's an interesting principle to think all of them in the same way yeah that uh you can't hack their growth uh it is long lasting when you have done deposits every day it is something which is like a game of snakes and ladder where uh the ladders are really really short and the snakes are really really long right uh and and it is somewhat 
a version of energy, trust, reputation uh, merged into all of these things, which continues to grow. So at one point, do you feel that once you decode or once you hack a particular system in its entirety, you can replicate that in various fields because all of them work on the same common principles? I, I don't know. I mean, I've been thinking about that. I'm sure there is a common principle. I just don't know. Hmm. Uh, I often believe that uh, entropy is the common principle to think about where you can think about uh, how you can use energy to unlock more energy, right? So humans yeah. are the only species that has managed to take all forms of energy and convert them to their own advantage, right? Yeah. So if you look at our wealth, it has kind of gone like this since industrial revolution because we figured out how to convert different forms of energy to our advantage. And till that time, agriculture was the only time we created some wealth. So it was kind of flattish for thousands of years. Yeah. Uh, and then industrial revolution, where we figured out how to convert uh, uh, hydro energy and nuclear energy and all of that stuff, you've just kind of taken off. Yeah. And there is no end to it. The wealth is going to keep going up like this because we have figured out how to convert energy into something else. And, and wealth is nothing but stored energy. Right. Uh, in a way, muscle is nothing but stored energy. In there that a potential energy to be able to move something, hit something. This is a stored energy in something. Yeah. Right. But your your it's a potential energy being stored. So yeah. if you think about a reputation, is also some version of potential energy. That the moment you launch something, like people are likely to receive it because there is potential energy stored. For example, let's say if Kunal Shah has deposited once a day. Uh, his thoughts and his views and his intent and his actions and all of that stuff, right? Uh, when he launches a new company, it will be received well right. because of the potential energy that was built up over a period of time. So trust and reputation is also potential energy, right? So if you think of almost everything in that equation, right, uh, uh, it becomes quite powerful. Uh, 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 and, and, and I have not really completely thought through this, but I do believe that the world operates on some universal principles and, and I, it's just that the language of each of them are different. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a matter of time that we uh, figure out these correlations and, and understand these things. But because human brain, I don't think really can decipher these things as we are now speaking through our vocabulary and words, right? Vocabulary is a way sometimes to complexify things. Mm. Uh, I believe that sometimes people with lower vocabulary have simpler insights and simpler clarity because it condenses information in a, in a, in a simple manner, right? So uh, the more complicated words, you know, the more you will use them. Correct. And, and more you will see them. I, I believe that a lot of human pain also comes from vocabulary. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you a classic example. I was talking to a, a very good friend uh, who used to work in skincare uh, in FMCG brands. And, and he used to say that the, uh, in selling more products to women is all about creating more vocabulary for them. <laughs> so, and it is interesting. Uh, so I asked him, what do you mean by that? And he said that, hey, you could easily sell one cream for wrinkles. But if you create a new vocabulary saying that the wrinkles in here, the eyes are crow's feet then you can sell a cream for crow's feet. Wow. And then you create a new vocabulary saying that, oh, this is for these things and you can sell another cream for that. This uh, reminds me of how uh, Eskimos have some 55 words for snow. Correct. 55 types of snow. It's crazy, right? And, and <laughs> for us, we will not see that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and therefore, sometimes I believe nuance is, uh, is a very strong concept almost like a double-edged sword brilliant dude absolutely the more the more you complicate things the more you need the processing power to calculate all those variables right and if you if you fail the consequences are worse off than if you would have just kept it simple correct correct so i think uh, <laughs> simple things scale right so if you think about religions that have scaled were the ones who really simplified it saying that one book, one God, 10 rules scale. Yeah. But religions that have not managed to scale are the ones where I don't know which God is this and which book do you really follow and which are the rules of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and those religions, but 
religions that probably outlast uh, time are the ones which are not simple, right? Because how do you really uh, like which god do you kill? Which book do you burn? Like there is no concept like that, right? Yeah. So anything that is uh, simple has the curse of scaling. Sorry, has the boon of scaling, but the curse of disappearing very soon. Uh, and anything that is complex uh, has the curse of not scaling, but has the advantage of lasting the time. Mm. So, in biological terms, the simple organisms have the advantage of scaling, but some of them also have the advantage of adaptability. So right. a simple genetic structure can change to a changing environment quicker. And it's sort of like the difference between a huge cruise ship and these small boats. The small boats are weaker, but they can be more in number and they can turn direction very quickly. And a cruise ship can't. So, right. that, yeah. So I think, uh, the right way to think about this is that when it comes to scaling things, right, uh, a company or an individual or a nation should be quite clear that and we have to get there, mm. right? But when it comes to personal compounding for a nation, for a company, for a thing, there should be all these sleeper cells that are constantly less compounding on the side and collecting insights, right? Yeah. And unless we have both these functions running in parallel, it's very hard to expect that you will survive time, right? Because uh, a lot of companies disappear because they take this uh, insight and say, Achha, bhai, ye isko military ki scale karna hai, no questions asked. And like in our lifetime, we saw Nokia disappear, right? Uh, in, in many interesting ways, because they took one principle and they missed a big thing of touch screen. Right. right? Like, and, and, and that was because there was a regimented view that, hey, man, people love keyboards, just keep scaling it, keep scaling it, right? And and that is the key insight over here that how do you create uh, uh, systems that is constantly adapting yeah. within the system and constantly scaling at the same time? And, and the person at least who is running it should systematically always, always think about being the Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh yeah. of the same thing right so there is a sustainer there is a creator uh, and there is a destroyer beautiful i i just love this thought so when i was reading biological uh, systems and in in our body the way our body functions with all its hormones and nerves and everything is that there are two states there is an anabolic state and there's a catabolic state mm -hmm. anabolic state is when you're growing when uh, you are healthy, there is enough food, you are working out and your the way your hormones are set up is very different. As soon as something goes wrong, you are into catabolic state. Now you are not focused on growth. Now you're focused on survival and it's like a switch. And I feel that the reason that we have survived, biology has survived is because of this adaptability. And maybe our financial systems and our mental state and our relationships don't have this. We are only focused on growth and crisis is like a, a anomaly. We don't expect it. We don't think, how can this be? How can we fight? But should maybe we should be expecting it and having a system in place. Yeah, I think uh, companies that do well account for all the things that can go wrong and start planning for it, right? Yeah. Uh, so when COVID started, the first thing that we did at CRED is we told the team that guys, none of you are having a job loss and none of you will have any salary cuts. Wow. So that we don't force them in the catabolic state. <laughs> right? That was the first lockdown announcement that we did that do not ever uh, think about this. You are guys, you guys are fine. In fact, we allowed team members to take personal loans just in case their families uh, were wow. struggling or something of that nature, because you have to do uh, in, a, in a natural crisis mode, you have to catapult people uh, into anabolic state in some ways, uh, because uh, it's almost like a wormhole that you can find from the crisis to kind of do extreme propulsion. The faster you can move in that direction, sometimes people go through crisis and complete destruction to uh, uh, get to that. 
and and it is it is uh, uh, how uh, something that we we don't realize that sometimes countries companies individuals have done extraordinarily well when they have gone through extreme crisis because i believe that almost at the bottom of the pit maybe there is a hole that takes you to success straight away i don't know so i i get what you mean so the way i see it is that we spend a lot of time creating these walls and structures and that's great it gives us a lot of security and safety but until you break them down you can't see how something new can be built so if you have an existing house then you will never think of building a different kind of structure there and so if you get an earthquake and everything collapses suddenly you feel that oh i can build it completely differently provided i have some resources left it's so funny you're saying that right so i think some people are naturally wired for this i'll give you a small story right so once i was at a uh in jw marriott juhu gone for a meeting and i had a basic car like maruti alto type car i had and and i gave my car uh, to the valet and they give you a ticket and i lost my ticket uh and i was out after a two and a half hour meeting i went back so i had a friend of mine who uh constantly was worrying saying that oh shit somebody would have taken the car and just gone or whatever and i mean this is like super poor state like maruti alto was a super luxury for me that time right and i remember figuring out asking them to figure out my car and where is it and all that stuff and while i was waiting at the porsche i was constantly looking at the new cars and thinking abhi kaun si car lenge <laughs> ye lenge ye lenge ye lenge and the thing is that my friend is like are you fucking crazy that what are you doing like you are moving in the direction where uh we should be worrying about what's happened to our car and i'm like oh which car will we buy what will we kind of move into right and it's an interesting flip of the brain in in people do different things based on that uh, i do believe that if you accept the idea of becoming zero right mm. and, and like the idea of being reborn and i i think it's some version of i don't know a version of neuroplasticity in some ways where you are like okay to things getting reconfigured all your beliefs going out of the window uh, 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 and and you learning new things and uh, all your belief systems just break i i actually look forward to it i i believe that if i could constantly find things that wipes out all the knowledge that i have accumulated and i get to get sharper better insights yeah i would be the most excited guy but most people love their past so much on what they have learned and we we call it confirmation bias we call it nostalgia we call it all of that and i think therefore those are not future oriented people mm-hmm. they are they are obsessed with their past they they are uh, uh uh they are they are in a version of themselves and therefore like i find it very disturbing when uh a, a lot of politicians in the past have managed to kind of take votes from us saying that hey we were so prosperous in the past and or so rich in the past and i and i looked at the data and i'm like yeah i have never seen rich buildings and all of that so only the kings were rich everybody else was always poor yeah. right so why are we just giving this false hope they are hum like means we we say that we were sone ki chidiya and then british looted us but the british only looted the kings tell me where 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 is our wealth where were these beautiful buildings and where were these beautiful canals and all of that stuff that we had that was just kind of taken away it's just that the, the king controlled the wealth the the, the kings just changed right yeah. at uh, what point would you have been born if not for now there was no better time to be born correct so i think so the, i think a lot of times i have seen that people tend to love past because making people love past is the fastest way of not letting them grow mm. oh wow and therefore i find it i find it disturbing when people advise people that love yourself uh, <laughs> which means you are trying to make people love their past self you should make them love their past values or something like values are eternal yeah. right uh, but skills are not eternal uh f- like feedback loops are not uh, permanent you need to do that and i think I, i i truly believe that the fastest way to stop somebody's growth is to make glorify their past damn it dude so i i always had a problem with how much time doctors have to spend in becoming a doctor 
and what happens is that their entire uh, productive years of you know studying and uh, the time when they could be out there thinking about really creative stuff is spent in the library it's great i mean the end result is that you end up saving lives and all that but what happens is that your identity is so tied down you cannot think of yourself as anything other than a doctor so there is a meme right like how do you how do you know if somebody is a doctor don't worry they'll tell you they, because that is what they have they have spent 15 years constructing that identity now if you forget about the doctor but then if you look at personalities in general everybody has done that everybody spent their whole life creating this persona and now they don't want to give it up they know that this yeah. created but see identity is extremely scary concept right uh, so let's talk about identity is similar to scaling right when you create identity it becomes easier to scale but it also become easiest to manipulate right the fastest right. way to offend a doctor on instagram is ask them ki yaar tumhone apna handle mein doctor kyu likha hai do you are you insecure and they will be reacting violently to you and you should try that experiment right like you ask the people who write doctor in their instagram saying that are you insecure is that why you writing doctor right and i ek second ruk maine likha hai kya ruk ek second the 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 fastest way to offend somebody is to know what they are proud of what they are proud of is the, is it their identity right right for example one guy tweeted recently thing that uh uh i i have to say that kunal shah's uh, uh videos are most uh, overrated and i was the first comment i said i agree <laughs> because what if i was proud of my content my videos and my knowledge then i'll be offended saying that how yeah. dare you tell me it's overrated like whatever right i also think it's overrated <laughs> i don't know i don't know i am a learning person i am constantly evolving i just share my evolution in public by sharing my thoughts constantly right, right. it's not my state it's my evolution right i may have exactly opposite views in 3 months time or 3 years time and but people will say oh boss tumne to pehle ye bola tha i'm like ha to kya hoga wo time pe wo sada right tha identity is fluid so that's the thing most people do not so the fastest way to manipulate somebody is to freeze their identity hmm this is who you are right aap ye ho like you should be proud of this and if you're proud of this then they will be not questioning it because mm. they have been given the trophy ke yaar ye aapka trophy aap aise kaise isko doubt kar sakte ho right i mean this right? is this is across everything politics ho relationship ho sab jagah pe anything anything in fact uh and, and therefore like flattery is a dangerous thing because you can keep telling somebody that hey you are this and you are this and then suddenly you meet somebody like you are not that what do you mean you are not that mere ko to isne 10 baar bola tha ki main ye hu and then it breaks and therefore people who don't do well at work or well at relationships in general is that they are uh uh succumb to these uh, identities right yeah. and i'm telling you identities are like these handles that you expose to the world that is similar to karo mere ko right like yeah i'm i'm getting this image of uh, if we have constructed our identity brick by brick then the cement is sort of like the validation that you get from people and every time somebody says oh wow sadat i love that video uh, you made and it was so good it is adding another layer it is making that identity a little bit stronger it's giving me comfort it's giving me a sense of yes this is who i am now if somebody comes and says that i hated that video they are actually chipping away at that cement yeah i think most people reject opposing views after they have accepted identities yeah of any type for example i uh, i once tweeted and asked people that do you think india has the best culture uh, uh ever and majority people said yes but how many people have even gone to other cultures to know ke ye best hai ke nahi hai yeah but because we have been told ke india is the best and we have to be patriotic we are likely to not question yeah india or its identity because we have accepted that flag on our shirt right right and and therefore you will see that idea of questioning identity uh, is very scary because you disappear 
when you start questioning identities of yours dude this is people right out of bhagavad gita really scared people are extremely scared of disappearing yeah right yeah uh, and i think i like the idea of disappearing because i can reappear in some other form right i can take a new form i can become something else i can and therefore i'm okay to suddenly have a view from physics to biology to keep switching to i don't care like because yeah. i'm an evolving person and an evolving identity uh uh like i i remember once i i figured this thing i i was briefly an investor i went to a conference and it's funny the conference had like two badges you could wear a founder badge which is a red color and and investor badge a green color it was like a matching event right and they gave me the investor badge and i did not want it <laughs> yaar main founder hu but i was an investor that time right so what i'm trying to tell you is that that identity allowed some version of manipulation in my case where i am like no i will not accept the investor identity hmm. how can you separate it i said mere ko dono do founder and investor karega and <laughs> right and it is it is weird be very honest to think about it on the one hand i get why uh, you do need stable identity for society to function we cannot look at each other and wonder who everybody is we need to have some level of trust that uh, if somebody says i'm a carpenter i need to trust that they are a carpenter suddenly they can't say i'm act- i'm actually yeah, a scuba diver system so badging system so if you think look at the whole degree system it's exactly that right hmm. uh, how do i trust you with my brain if you are not a a uh, a trained qualified neurobiologist or right. whatever that is, or neuroscience right. or whatever that is right uh, or a, or but and, and therefore external credentialing works really well to kind of be able to create a trusting mechanic right that you trust competence right you may not trust their benevolence but you trust their competence to be able to do that right you don't expect your a uh, guy who's helping you land in a parachute to be benevolent but you expect him to be competent to be able to land right so i think uh uh identities are useful as a marker for the other world to treat you and give you certain social status or mating success or whatever that is through yeah. those identities the problem is that you accept those identities as your final state ye upper limit correct ye right. yeah, final state hai kya aapka right as right. opposed to using it as a springboard or just another level or another stair on your evolution Okay, this is my identity for now, but tomorrow I'll climb two more stairs, and my identity will change. Yeah, I I think people tend to overestimate their ability to continuously evolve. They think पढ़ाई हो गया, हो गया क्या होता है, right? Life तो अभी शुरू हुआ. Right. So and I think constantly evolving characters and individuals tend to do better in life. if they have strong feedback loops in in some ways right uh, and i think therefore uh, i think there is a role of thermodynamics over here right so a lot of people say that you are a uh, average of five people around you right it's somewhat their energies that are spreading with you and and let's say you say yaar i don't have good people around me to book padho na hmm right so you will be around good people because you will uh, let's say read yeah. a book of some really smart person then you are in their company a uh, briefly right and you will change your views and you will evolve your thinking right and and question right like for example how how many people have actually questioned that is india the best culture like have you question kiya yeah. because identity pe jab when you question it yeah. creates violent reaction amygdala is triggered my amygdala you are questioning my identity amygdala ne bola ke boss we are this right and and I, I I really remember once I asked somebody uh, on Facebook who had written C A in front of their name. I had seen doctors do that. I was like, "Tum C A करने का क्या ज़रूरत है?" So that person was really offended by me merely asking that question. That why did you feel the need on a social platform to write C A in front of your name? Yeah. So their identity was locked into that particular thing, right? and and you will notice that people who really describe their profile with lot of keywords are exposing more and more handles to yeah. be manipulated or to be triggered yeah. or to be offended right yeah. if you say that i do not have an identity i don't know what i am 
then you will never have a problem of any jokes made on you hmm. and and i believe that the fastest way to learn how to not be offended is to make the best jokes on yourself nobody else should make better jokes on you hmm i i have a counterpoint to this i feel that uh, identity or every everything in growth has to go through this cyclical loop of consolidation fluidity consolidation fluidity so you are supposed to grow your identity i believe that and then you're supposed to break it down and then you're again supposed to grow your identity because you're sort of building the next step so the problem happens when somebody builds their identity and then says done mera kaam khatam but then at some point you do need to consolidate it or uh, use that to grow right i mean yeah. otherwise if you if you made an identity that you are evolving hmm. then you can outlast that for your life you can have very interesting titles and labels to yourself that i am an evolver and i am a system i am a product i am an yeah. iterative a uh, person then you will not need to worry about any identity you have today right then i am i am i am better version of myself from last week right if that is your identity of becoming a better version then you will not care about what your identities are this has a lot to do with scalability also a fluid system is more uh, a, a system that can be both fluid and consistent at will is much more scalable so perfect so i think that ability to take those two sides consistently and context switch constantly yeah right uh, a lot of people say hey kunal how do you get all this time to read also and tweet also and run a company also and all of that stuff and the question is that can you switch states can you switch states uh why would anybody in my team want to respect me if i was not evolving faster than them yeah <laughs> why would wow. you want to work for anybody who is not evolving faster than you i don't remember i don't uh, know if you remember this small little conversation we had on instagram a long just when uh, before covid had started i think uh, about uh, doctors and scalability and uh, Yeah, I won't talk about the whole conversation, but the, why not? Uh, <laughs> why are you scared of the conversation? Talk about it. Okay, uh, so the idea was that I had just started doing these online classes on neuroscience, and I think a, a friend of mine, huge shout out to Tripti, by the way, for connecting me to you and to Tanmay. Uh, so the idea was we had this small conversation on how what doctors do isn't scalable because you have to be there in person. and if you are really trying trying to do something scalable then you should do something where uh, the idea is more fluid and it can be replicated without your physical presence uh in the in the environment that i grew up in or in general a lot of indian kids grew up in there is a lot of focus on stability on that consistency and let's go away from fluidity let's not let's not keep things fluid because fluid is dangerous do you think that indians are at a disadvantage or have been at a disadvantage because of this kind of thinking or is it changing now um so one fact that we have to accept especially for india is the every generation the average iq is going up hmm okay right so relying on people from the past on how should we conduct our life going forward is is a little problematic right, right. Uh, we can take their inputs on values because values are eternal yeah right should you be moral should you be righteous should you be giving our eternal principles we can look up to our grandparents parents for that advice but future mein career mein kya karna chahiye Mm-hmm. right uh, is less likely to come from that because the world is changing very very fast yeah. right so you want to talk to somebody way ahead in future and take their advice you probably want to watch uh, elon musk advice on career on youtube versus listen to your parents sometimes to do that mm-hmm. right it's a different dimension we we tend to aggregate all our advice to some mentors which is problematic mm-hmm. right in fact 
anybody who believes in one mentor is is anyways doomed because uh, everybody is good for only one or two things right not yeah. everything yeah uh, imagine taking fitness advice from me it doesn't make sense <laughs> uh, uh, so uh although i know everything about fitness and everything about hormones and lipogenesis and uh, all sorts of things with goes on in our body but it's not the best place to take an advice yeah. i can tell you why what happens and and why do people gain fat and why do for example i have a uh, a uh, uh, a perfect state of no blood sugar but weight continues to grow because my uh, adipose system is is designed differently and it will kind of store more fat than mm-hmm. most people for the same amount of food that they eat क्या करेंगे ये है अ अ थिंग इज इफ वी आर नॉट इवॉल्विंग टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हिच प्लेसेस वी टेक व्हाट एडवाइस फ्रॉम दैट्स वन एंड अदर थिंग इज जस्ट द नीड टू सेटल राइट सो वी वी केम फ्रॉम क्राइसिस वी वी इट मेड सेंस फॉर आवर पेरेंट्स टू जस्ट से सेटल डाउन राइट लाइक जस्ट गेट अ बेसिक हाउस और व्हाटएवर एंड एंड नॉट बिकम ऑल दिस अग्रेसिव पर्सन हु इज ट्राइंग टू डू दैट बिकॉज़ arranged marriages may it becomes harder to sell a candidate who is evolving yeah but if you are likely to move to a system where 95% of marriage marriages are not arranged then evolving not, will not be considered as a bad trait yeah it's right? future proofing it's future proofing in some ways but a lot of time evolving changing people are not liked because if you are not if your if your partner is not evolving as fast as you sometimes relationships fall apart yeah right and we underestimate the power of that that compounding is great if you and your partner or your team or your boss or your co-founder are compounding with you yeah if the compounding rate changes then you suddenly feel distance and you like i can't believe i was with person i was dating this person i was friends with this person i worked for this person yeah i employed this person yeah so it's it's like if somebody is less evolved than you then they are uh, old fashioned and if they're more evolved than you then they are radical yeah and and radical sometimes is is the same as i, I believe all extremes are the same uh 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 because uh, i believe left and extreme left and extreme right are exactly same people right. uh, uh just with two different targets god to worship they are exactly religious people right so the thing is that a lot of times we do not appreciate some of these things of being in the middle which is the evolving state right versus like for for example people ask me so what's your favorite author like that's the fastest way to become dumb in life that you decide your favorite right favorite as a concept is the fastest way to tell your brain kya bhi bas ye final ye apna best hero hai ye Damn. best hero hai yeah why why limit yourself yeah why have favorites of anything yeah. right in fact i have tell you like, i have seen a correlation between people who don't evolve are the ones who are stuck on their cuisine also yaar i like this pot dishes yaar mujhe matlab abhi ye sab japanese mat try karao mere ko like like i'm, I'm very happy right i mean in their defense most of their food moves yeah yeah dude uh, indian tourism like thrives when the the tour operator says it's, you will get pav bhaji and yeah. dosa and all of that stuff in the trip and people are like damn that's go for the trip and and the thing is that this is a love for nostalgia like i used to love let's say eating yeah. certain dishes when i was young and i i'm only that now i have not evolved my cuisine i have not evolved on the places that i like to travel Oh, I'm a beach person. Like, why mountain? Why not? I, I have a, I have a weird question. Uh, so you've been in the in the startup space for a while, and you you've hired people maybe to ten, fifteen years ago, and you're hiring people now. In the last ten years, fifteen years, the kind of uh, people who come uh, looking for a job, are they more fluid? Are they more open-minded? Has there been a change recently? I've been able to afford more fluid people. I would say uh, uh, I would not be <laughs> avoid more fluid people in the past. Right. But it is not natural. You really have to force people to become fluid. And like many people who have joined and worked with me, they 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 find it hard to remember what they were two years ago, right? Because like I force a lot of these faster evolution. Now the thing is, it comes at a cost. Hmm. The cost is that who you don't know who you are. 
you cannot reside on anything you cannot reside on any laurels and, and you are like oh shit am i useless and am i anything and 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 uh, only few people kind of come out of that situation yeah. but many people are like oh shit like this is too fast it's moving and you when you time compressed growth right, right. Uh, you are forcing more experiences per year than normal people yeah. right and therefore people who work at startups become way more mature than people who work at corporates because in a startup you are forced to have more experiences per year if you do your own startup then it's even faster the marketing bhi seekhna padega uh, uh, coding bhi seekhna padega uh, uh, investor pitch bhi seekhna padega uh, advertising bhi seekhna padega like See, it is a fast yeah. way to compress growth right you are creating I, yeah sir so that's why I, i truly believe that every college student should become an entrepreneur in their college days hmm. because it's the fastest way of knowing all the things you are bad at imagine knowing this after 15 years of your life what are you talking <laughs> about it's it's sort of like how people say that adopt a adopt a pet before you have a baby yeah add that chaos to your life see where all you suck yeah and figure it out but that is an interesting thing i i believe that this need of this delayed marriages delayed need for having kids is making pets extremely successful as a oxytocin replacement right now yeah so i'm seeing that everybody has got sucked into this suddenly and social proof creates a mimetic desire of uh, uh uh oh shit so cute and oxytocin is a weird hormone that you can actually release it when somebody else is getting loved also right so uh, uh dopamine ke liye khud ka chahiye but uh, uh, oxytocin is like a wifi right uh, uh, it is something that i feel somebody else is getting loved and i feel oh oh and i'm like fuck i need my own pet also right so uh, uh, and i i i mean oxytocin being a wifi hormone is an insanely powerful thing right like yeah. imagine you see somebody helping a blind person cross the street and you release you oxytocin <laughs> i love this i love that you're dropping this neuroscience truth bombs <laughs> Not that I've read anything about neuroscience. I just probably wing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is so true. Oxytocin is basically what holds all of this together. This whole society is held together because of oxytocin and empathy. And yeah. the more oxytocin you have, when so I, I think yeah. oxytocin is the glue that allows the species to grow, yeah. right? I also believe that uh, a mob mentality kicks in also because I think amygdala is also a herd. Yeah. So. We, we we act like mob when everybody's amygdala is hijacked, right? So yeah. when amygdala is hijacked, your identity disappears, which exists in your cortex in some way, right? So amygdala creates a mob, right? Like like protest and Dude. like you know, bash yeah. something. So oxytocin plus amygdala is the mob, because oxytocin ka negative side is that mm-hmm. we are all together, we love each other, but as a group, if we are threatened, then as a group we will attack. So basically, it forces the group to become even stronger. So common hate makes them bond faster. Brilliant, absolutely. So you have a competitor to grow. If you don't have a competitor, then that you are actually uh, not using that whole aspect of oxytocin. Makes makes so much sense. Uh, I think Sid, we should do more podcasts where I just throw some random things, and you should explain the uh, <laughs> neuroscience version of that, so that it Dude. gets much more sharper in my brain on what's really happening because. i observe these phenomena without any bias sorry any any basis to um how some of these concepts exist because i often feel that uh entire species like becomes like one when there is an amygdala hijack like covid was that situation COVID right like that. we acted like one uh hijacked species right uh and and across world like billions of people acted in that manner the cortex was out there are so many people who are still stuck stuck at home right now their amygdala is such a hijack mode right now yeah. that they have not left home in the bangalore mein now the cases are like 70 per day or 80 per day right there are there are team members in my office who's amygdala is hijacked to the point that they have not left home in 12 months and i'm really worried about their mental health yeah uh, uh, because we are ultimately social animals i remember you mentioning in one of your talks about a hyper connected society yes and uh, the way that uh, throughout our evolution we have been connecting more and more first through language then through 
printed text now through wi-fi and now right. because of mobile phones we are literally pinging thoughts off of each other right. and so covid was a very great example of how as a species we would react to a global threat the same thing in the 17th century and it would have been a much more uh, broken response but today we are not like that we are actually functioning as one single brain in a way yeah. uh, i i think it also allows the species to grow like yeah. i says the scale and and compounding thing right the scale requires you to remove the principles you operate on and and you bring one so one See, one god is equal to one crisis, right? So COVID was equal to one religion, right? Yeah. You force everybody to believe on a common enemy. That's how one tribe came together, right? Yeah. And I think if nations did not exist in some ways, uh, the world would have found a way to common way to come together, right? Like that's why I always keep telling people that I wish we find aliens who are out there to kill us because that's when the world will become one. That's right? the only thing. But it would probably not be aliens. it would probably be humans in mars i i i, I don't know <laughs> i think that so. needs to threaten the entire state of humanity yeah and i think that will change things dramatically for us and and do more things for us absolutely uh, are there any major cred plans uh, in the next one year uh, something you're really excited Fine, about man evolving doing interesting things uh, uh, we are embarked on this crazy idea of almost creating a parallel world of trustworthy individuals figuring out a way to work together okay we started the first part of our journey we'll keep doing more things uh it's an ambitious plan of really making that group to be more cooperative and well behaved so that there is financial progress for them uh mm -hmm. and, and more people wish to be like them and therefore create more financial progress in some ways Right. Uh, it's almost like a credentialing system that for the word cred comes in yeah. some ways from is that if you can somehow create that world uh, uh where they get better preference in general hmm. right uh like you have more cred example, i did a random social media post once saying that hey uh if if cred launches dating would you pay for it and like 80% people said yes because it's a credential in mechanism of mm. not only affluence but also stability right because good credit score shows that you're consistently paying your bills on time which yeah. is similar to being a financially healthy person so it's 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 a, it's a better marker for your personality than uh, your tinder bio yeah so in fact in in many countries like japan and china credit scores exist in dating apps ha huh. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Probably, uh, uh, I think that's the beautiful thing about using this line: is it a good thing or bad thing? Everything is a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> is WhatsApp a good thing or a bad thing? It's both. Is Life a good thing or a bad thing? It's both. Uh, uh, yeah. Are these podcasts good thing or a bad thing? It's both, depending on who you are. That's true. It's just information. In a way, it's just information. Exactly. <laughs> everything is information. Everything is energy. Wow, uh, Kunal, I had, I had a long list of questions to ask you, but I think uh, the kind of conversations that I think we have, it would, uh, it could just go on forever, and I don't know how much time you have. So uh, I, I need to go do it, but we should do this again. Uh, I would love to. And and what we should do is take, uh, break apart concepts from my point of view and kind of add your, uh, lens on it. Uh, yeah. And we should increase the lenses that we both operate with. Uh, I think uh, my I I believe that my goal, personal goal in life, is to uh, get more lenses in life to be yeah. able to see one thing from five hundred different perspectives. Yeah. Uh, and I think we should break apart brands. So, we should break apart uh, 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 mob. We should break apart uh, 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 anything than everything that is happening. So maybe we should schedule something soon. That would be brilliant. Uh, so couple of. topics just as a teaser that i wanted to discuss was the this clubhouse phenomenon that happened and how education is just going away from universities and into this whole weird online space and we are not sure where it's going to go but it's clear that education is going away from the I, traditional system i don't agree with this no i don't agree with this at all okay you can get six pack at home without any devices also mm hmm to bhi log gym ja rahe hai na बात तो सही है सो इट वॉज नेवर 
the lack of options to achieve the end state hmm. humans go to a gym to be able to be socially bond and potentially have some mating success also <laughs> same for university knowledge ke liye thodi ja rahe hain wahan par say so, yeah, sometimes we forget that we are not just cortical animals we need that all the products that have lasted for a long period of time usually never offers a single benefit right it's a product with complex amount of benefits merged into it that you really don't know why you're doing it hmm. yeah we don't think about the social currency part the social currency or kya mil raha you feel good you watched yourself in the mirror compared to other people there are so many signals yeah right uh the 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 flag that hey like people see you walking out of and getting out of a gym there are so many reasons you do that right we so, do, yeah we like to simplify we like to say that okay i'll go to this class and learn this one thing and come but if it's only one thing you feel like it's cheating mujhe if i go to a university i would get so much more yeah so the thing is that a lot of times these mark so for example let's say at least when you go to a gym your body transformation is a good marker right. of you achieving that desired state from that particular process in education we can't see a change in a person's face or body externally to know ke isko how to make kuch sikha bhi nahi sikha right so the question is that sometimes the entry to these places becomes the marker right. and therefore i don't see it going away anytime so knowledge was never the reason people went to university ouch uh, uh, and i think that is going to be the norm for a long period of time Brilliant stuff, dude. Uh, I'm going to have you back, right? Because uh, happy to be back, dude. Happy to be back. We'll figure out something. Okay. Yes, we will. Kunal, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, if is there is there any message you want to give out to the chat? Is there anything you want to tell people? I don't know, man. Uh, it's your chat. It's your place. I just came and blabbered, <laughs> and I'm looking off now. See you. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm just going to spend some time with. Uh, all right. Cool. Yeah. Bye. See you, see you, man. Bye. All right. Mm. Okay. Chat. Uh, any suggestion for people in their twenties who want to become rich and financially independent? So I'm sorry, I couldn't take a lot of your questions. There was, as you saw, that conversation was just going way too fast, and it was it was just covering so much. I was just trying to, you know, keep up with it, and we are definitely going to have Kunal back, guys. I am hundred percent sure we are going to have uh, more of him. So thank you all for joining in. I'm so glad that uh, you know four twenty of you joined in uh, in the morning. I know that some of you have work and all of that. So thank you so much. We will be releasing small videos of this conversation, like a highlight reel, and I think that that would be great for everyone. One sec, one sec, one sec. I'll I'll fix the OBS. Just give me a second. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah. Follow. One sec, one sec, one sec. Give me a second. Yeah. All right, guys. I think we are gonna go. Even I have to get to work. Uh, I'm from Prakar channel. Oh, I think Prakar and uh, Lightning Emperor were both here. I'm gonna try and get Kunal for trifecta sometime. That would be great. Okay, chalo guys. I'm gonna take some of your questions so uh, later the next time that uh, the next time that uh, Kunal comes on. They have Elon. We have Kunal sir. Absolutely. This was such an amazing amazing conversation. I I really loved it. I was really, really happy. Take his question for next stream. He paid hundred rupees. That's true. Vivek Kumar, I apologize. I couldn't take your uh, question. I'm going to ask him uh, if at some point that we do chat off off stream, and uh, I I will try and answer this question in the next time we have a we have a call. Uploaded on Spotify, Ashish Tiwari. So that is the plan. Once I have four or five more podcasts. Uh, i will be uploading the series on uh, spotify i will make sure that i announce it to all of you and uh, yeah you go do your stuff follow me on instagram uh, the link is uh, there in the description if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do that uh, 
I'm going to try and keep having interesting conversations for you guys and you do your stuff. Spread the word of the channel and let's see if we can grow in 2021. As Kunal said, let's see if we can grow. All right. Bye guys. Have a great day. See you.